Ray 12s again man welcome back <clears throat> into our lesson video um, today we are going to be focusing on life science revision paper 2 guys okay yes life sciences paper 2 and this paper was written um, November 2019 this was final the very same final um, that you are going to write um, yes for life sciences this year okay so let's um let's uh concentrate on our question 3.1 okay yes so question 3 question 3.1 the diagram below show the skulls of two species of primates okay we have skull one as you can see skull one and you have skull two okay so guys let me first um give you a definition of bipedalism okay because in each and every time um in a life science paper bipedalism is going to come out okay yes so bipedalism is basically means that this is walking through your two legs okay yes or walking on two legs okay yes that's bipedalism that's the definition of bipedalism so i again i repeat bipedalism is walking on two legs similar like that because i know a definition will come out although we're going we're not going to discuss a definition of um bipedalism here um i'm just giving you a clue because it might come out in each and every area okay in a uh, much fresh question in um biological terms um in tables and in end okay yes so i'm just reminding you guys so that at least you can just pick up those remarks okay yes those who haven't subscribed please subscribe question 3.1.1 says tabulate three observable differences between skull one and skull two that show trends in human evolution okay so now we are going to tabulate um three observable differences skull one okay so the only so why um three we three three okay yes so i'm just going to give you um, more as possible um in terms of tabulating so we are going to create a table okay yes after creating a table we are going to write for skull one like this this is your skull your skull one i'm going to write your skull two yeah skull two and try tail and write three okay yes and tablet three okay and the also one mark um is um is for the table okay because the one mark is for the table but i'm not i'm not going to draw a table for you maybe i'm not sure okay yes but you should draw a table okay let me try draw a table okay they said three okay okay let me give you four let me give you four so we have um we have um we have skull we have skull one this side and we have skull we have skull two skull two so as you can see on our skull one our skull one have larger jaws okay as you can see we have larger jaws smaller cranium size you can see but in skull two we have smaller jaws but larger cranium size poorly developed chin well developed chin on skull two skull one also have sloping face but skull two 
have flat face and so on so let's write down those so one um okay let me just write the one okay so ladder draws ladder draws for skull one skull two smaller jaws okay small cranium size cranium size large cranium size and lastly you have um, sloping face sloping face for skull one skull to a flat face flat face there's more guys okay yes so by the way that was um that was our question that was our 3.1.1 okay yes it was 3.1.1 Okay, that was 3.1.1. That was 3.1.1. Let's move to 3.1.2. So there is more, by the way, guys. Just to add up for you, you can also say, um, as I said, poor developed chain in skull one, but twelve developed chain in skull two. Also, skull two has a lot of less um, protruding jaws, but skull one is more protruding jaws. Okay, yes. So, mm -hmm. yes, you can say all of those things. Let's jump to our question 3.1.2. 3.1.2 says give four characteristics. Of the upper limbs that humans share with the other primates. Okay, we're talking about arms now. Okay, upper limbs. Okay, um, you know we have free rotating, freely rotating arms. Um, that's one. Um, they said you can give any four, right? Okay, so. We have longer upper arms. Longer upper arms. If you can also rotate your arm, okay? As you know, so we have rotating around elbow joint. Rotating around elbow joint. Okay. Also, have rotating around the wrist, rotating around the wrist. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Well, we also have nails instead. of claws and lastly what I can give you you have um, fingerprints present okay yes fingerprints fingerprints are present okay yes so the title goes um, one two three four five six i gave you six so you can write the very first four okay that i gave you um write down if they ask you a question like this let's jump to three point one point three three point one point three says explain okay says 
explain how an increase in cranial volume is related to intelligence so meaning that this statement says if ever you have um high volume of a cranium that that basically means that we have related meaning that you are you are intelligent okay yes so explain how an increase in cranial volume is related to the intelligence okay you know that a cranial is a prediction of, of, of a brain okay yes it acts as a prediction of a brain it's a brain cover meaning that if there is more cranial around there's more brain inside you know we use brain for thinking and for innovation and and, and. okay yes so let's go right down to point one point three. So as I said to you, since um, the cranium houses the brain, cranium houses the brain. The brain. Let's see one mark. So a large. That was two marks, by the way. So a large cranium volume, volume indicates, indicates larger brain, larger brain, which suggests greater intelligence. That's a climax, which suggests greater intelligence intelligent intelligence that's how it goes so since the cranium houses the brain so I mark a, a large cranium volume indicates a larger brain two marks which suggest greater intelligence that's your whole three marks okay that was it guys um, Thank you so much please don't forget to subscribe okay please don't forget to subscribe wish you the best um see you cheers